Dixie, Easton's Cup of Health and Happiness. Consider the paper cup. Clean, simple, useful, disposable. Drink and toss. Millions of people do it every day. But a little more than a hundred years ago, the paper cup was a revolutionary idea. Before 1910, if you wanted a drink of water at home or in a school office or train, you went to a bucket that had a dipper or tin cup hanging alongside. Scoop up some water, drink, and drop the cup or dipper. No one gave it any thought. No one, that is, but doctors and scientists who discovered in the late 19th century that tiny organisms in water could cause killer diseases such as cholera, diphtheria, and typhoid. They began to connect diseases to specific germs and determined how they made people sick. Suspicion soon fell on the buckets of water in so-called common cups. By 1900, a growing progressive public health movement was campaigning to abolish them. But what would people use to get a drink? Lawrence Llewellyn had an idea. He invented a vending machine that would sell you a fresh paper cup filled with cold water for a penny. Llewellyn was a Boston lawyer with wealthy clients who wanted to invest in just such a scheme. His brother-in-law, Hugh Moore, dropped out of Harvard to help Llewellyn establish the American Water Supply Company of New England. Moore proved to be an ace marketer. The company started making machines that just sold cups and installed the machines next to public drinking fountains. Moore joined the crusade against the Common Cup by publishing The Cup Campaigner, a pamphlet with articles and lurid illustrations condemning the public dipper. Doctors in the public health movement endorsed the disposable paper cup as a way to prevent the spread of germs and disease. But not everyone was convinced that shared drinking cups made people sick. Then in 1907, Lafayette College biology professor Alvin Davison examined several common drinking glasses that he collected in Easton's public schools. Using cutting edge science, he proved the glasses contained millions of germs from students who used them. Davison found bacteria that caused tuberculosis, strep throat, diphtheria, and influenza, all deadly diseases in those pre-antibiotic days. In 1909, the year after Davidson's study was published, Kansas became the first state to abolish the common drinking cup, and most states soon followed. Moore and Llewellyn moved to New York City and incorporated the individual drinking cup company in 1910. They hired engineers who developed machinery that made cups untouched by human hands. They called it the Health Cup. The Health Cup had competition, lots of it, but Moore's marketing savvy put his company ahead. The flu epidemic of 1918 greatly boosted the demand for disposable cups. The Health Cup was renamed the Dixie Cup, and the first order of business was bigger production facilities. In the summer of 1919, Moore bought seven acres of farmland in Wilson Township and opened a new 80,000 square foot factory in 1921. Moore thought he had overbuilt, but sales continued to soar, and within a decade, Moore expanded twice. In 1923, the individual drinking cup company introduced ice cream Dixies, cups filled with high quality ice cream from dairies that met strict company standards. The first markets were Allentown and Washington, D.C. National advertising quickly gave Ice Cream Dixie's national distribution. Children began appearing in Dixie advertising at the same time. Ice Cream Dixie's were promoted as a safe, clean way to give kids a healthful treat and make them happy in the process. Ads full of smiling, active boys and girls persuaded doting moms and dads to bring home the Dixies. Then Moore decided to sell straight to those children through a new medium, radio. 
the Dixie Circus, a weekly show that debuted in 1928 and became a pioneer in radio advertising, featured 25 animal characters, each with its own name, voice, and personality. It was an immediate hit with children, who mailed sacks of letters requesting pictures of their favorite characters. The company began putting the animals' pictures on the underside of Ice Cream Dixie's lids and encouraged kids to collect them all and exchange a set of lids for a large picture of a character. By the 1930s, the imaginary animals were replaced by movie stars and sports heroes, all collectible, of course. The war years even saw lids printed with pictures of U.S. military services in action. A company marketing study discovered that, quote, collecting things is a fundamental instinct of children and sold a lot of cups and ice cream because of it. The 1930s saw the Dixie Cup expand into soda fountains and lunch counters, again promoting the safe, clean, touch-no-lips-but-yours appeal and the no-glass-to-wash, money-saving convenience. Dixie assumed an even bigger presence in the soda fountain market in 1936 when it bought the Vortex Cup Company, a maker of cone-shaped paper cups and sundae dishes. The company was renamed Dixie Vortex for six years and finally became known as the Dixie Cup Company in 1942. Dixie products went around the world with the American Armed Forces and the Red Cross during World War II. Dixie developed a portable water tank with cup dispenser for the military and defense industries. The lightweight, easily disposable cups were a boon on crowded ships and military bases. In the car-crazy post-war years, Dixie salesmen persuaded gas stations to sell packaged cups to travelers for a safe, disposable way to quench their thirst. Harried mothers found cups and home dispensers on supermarket shelves in the 1950s. Their kids, the baby boomers, could safely serve themselves and mom got away from washing glasses over and over. And promoting clean paper cups to avoid disease-causing germs was still effective. The company continued to innovate, making sophisticated designs for adult cocktail parties, a better lining for hot beverage cups, custom designs for thousands of different businesses, and a better paper beer cup for sports fans. Hugh Moore retired in 1957 when the company was bought by American Can Company, which continued production in the flagship building on Easton's 25th Street, but also opened a new Dixie factory in Forks Township in 1964. The James River Paper Company purchased American Can in 1982 and closed the 25th Street factory. Georgia Pacific acquired James River in 2000 and today operates the Forks Township Dixie plant, which manufactures one of the company's newest innovations, the Perfect Touch Hot Beverage Cup. Hugh Moore dedicated much of the wealth and influence of his Dixie Cup enterprises to various philanthropic and public service causes. In 1962, he donated more than $200,000 to the city of Easton to purchase six miles of the Lehigh Canal, as well as 260 acres of property along the canal and the Lehigh River. This land is now Hugh Moore Park, the city park with a restored canal supported by a trust fund Moore created. Nearly 45 years after his death, Moore and the company he founded still play a large role in the Easton area community.